Hello, uh, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold, and you're some old adults who can barely get in here in your wheelchairs. <laughs> exactly. In fact, I'm older than all of them added up, maybe. Eh. Mm. I'm a, they're about a year older than me, the six of them. Okay, so today's lecture is on your favorite topic, stalemate. Okay, now I just went to Dunkin' Donuts and I got some bagels. You guys got donuts, right? That was in preparation for the lecture. Now you know what stale is. Now you're going to learn stalemate. They didn't get it. Okay, smart audience. You guys go to public school, right? No. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Some of them don't know. If you don't know, it's public. Okay. Anyway, stalemate is something you don't understand. And the reason is you think you understand it. That makes it even worse. Okay. It's actually better if you know you don't understand it than you think you do. Then you, you know, think of things wrong. Terrible. Stalemate is when you have no legal move with anything. It's your turn to move and you're not in check. It's the same as checkmate except for the check part. If you're in check, it's checkmate. If you're not in check, it's stalemate. And I've actually seen a lot of kids say checkmate when it's not check. But I'm like, well, it's not check because their piece is close to the other piece. Notice all of the games on the list ended in draws yeah. because stalemates a draw. Now I'm going to confuse the class. All stalemates are draws, but not all draws are stalemates. You should see the look on their face. Okay, actually there's about seven ways to draw the game and stalemates one of them. And a lot of kids, when the game is drawn for another reason, they just say stalemate thinking that's all draws, right? Stalemate is what I said it was. Let me give you an example. You have a king and your opponent has a king and there's nothing else on the board. That's it, right? Is, can somebody win? No. Well, if you're playing me, I would win. But anyway, that, that would be a draw, but that's not stalemate. That's called a draw due to insufficient mating material. That means nobody can checkmate. Nobody could ever checkmate, ever. So it's a draw. It's not because it's stalemate. Stalemate's the other thing that I said. That's not the other thing that I said, is it? Let's say you're playing somebody and the game's really boring. And you're like, this game's really boring. Nobody could ever win. I offer you a draw. And the guy's like, okay. You and your opponent can agree to a draw. The game's over, right? Archer did that yesterday, maybe, in round one. Okay, is that a stalemate? No, that's an agreed draw. Okay, it could be you guys move back and forth forever. The same position occurs three times. Is that stalemate? No, but that's a draw. You're claiming a draw by the same position occurring three times. So stalemate is a specific draw. It means that you have no legal move. Now, let me explain why stalemate's like the lottery. You probably didn't realize that, did you? Let's say you play the lottery every day. And if you win, you win $300 million, okay? Do you ever win? No. So you play on Monday and you look and you're like, oh, I didn't win. Then you play on Tuesday, oh, I didn't win. Every day you check, you didn't win. At some point, you know you're not gonna win because you never win. And maybe one day you don't even check your ticket because you're like, well, what's the difference? I'll check and I didn't win, right? Okay. And it could be that's the day you won, but you didn't check your ticket. The reason is it never happens. So you're just like, well, what's the point of even checking my ticket? Maybe you shouldn't play the lottery. Anyway, stalemates like that. When you're a good player like me, there are no stalemates. I don't have stalemates in my games. So when a stalemate does happen, maybe I'm not paying attention because I never see it, like the lottery. When you guys play, and you're down 500 pieces, or you're up 500 pieces, there's a lot of stalemates in your games, okay? In my games, we don't do that. So therefore, when grandmasters have stalemates, we find that funny. Now, before I get to the grandmaster games, I wanna show you something more important. And that is stalemates that are normal. The stalemates I'm gonna show you, for the most part, one side is winning, and they're like, oh no, I stalemated, and they cry. Right? 
But there's actually normal stalemates. That's just that's just the way chess is. It's stalemate. That, nothing you can do. Okay. Now, if both sides play perfect, this will be a stalemate. It will be. Okay. Now, of course, they can play badly, and then it won't be a stalemate. In this position, black has three moves. One of those moves is good, the other two are bad. Connor with the right answer. Go back. Okay. Anyone else? One. What? I went back. back. I went back. Back to E8. But I went back. Oh, you mean the chest position? Yeah. That's correct. Okay, and now in the final position, white plays stalemate. It's black's turn to move, and black can't move anywhere. Is black's king in check? No. No? So it's stalemate. Who wins? No. Nobody. Okay? And that's because that, that, was, that was what should have happened. That's okay. Now, sometimes you should win. You're winning. You're taking everything. You're going to win for sure. Then you stalemate and go, aw. Okay, don't do that. Or your opponent is taking all of your pieces, and you're going to lose for sure. And then they stalemate you. Then you didn't lose. Right? Those are unusual stalemates that we're going to look at in the lecture. These are normal stalemates. That's just what happened because that's what's supposed to happen. Another position which will end in a stalemate is also king and pawn versus king. Then I'm going to tell you about a crazy grandmaster. Crazy like a fox or crazy like Fox News? I don't know. Not sure. Okay, so let's say we do this. That's, we're not getting anywhere, are we? Right? So white wants to win, white plays this move, and black goes here, and that's stalemate. Who wins? No. Nobody, okay. Now, let's say white's like, well, that doesn't work. Let's go here. Stalemate. White stalemates black, black stalemates white. It's a tie. Or, if you don't want to stalemate, because you want to win, you could just move your king back and forth forever. And that's that, that also doesn't win. So this position you can't win unless black does something really silly. Black's like, I'll move over here and I'll let you queen. Okay? Is that a good idea? Yes. Well, it's good for white. Now, in this position, should white win or should it be a draw? White to win. White should win. But let's say white's not playing too well and he does this. That's stalemate. That's stalemate. That's a tie. Nobody wins. It's not check, and there's no legal move. So when you have a winning position, do you want to stalemate your opponent? No. no. When you're losing, you want them to stalemate you. Then you don't lose. That's better. Now, I have a funny story. Yesterday, you were there, right, Connor? And you were there, Archer. Yesterday, we had a chess tournament here in that, in that room. And on board one of the top section, the two best players in the tournament, okay? They were rated much higher than you. One of them lost a bishop really early. He was down a bishop the whole game. Always down a bishop. Okay, then they got to the very end of the game. All the way to the end. And black had, or sorry, white, white had one piece left. And he said, here, take it. And if black takes it, it's stalemate. Did black take it? No. Because black knew it would be stalemate. Black made another move, which turned out to be a blunder, which was another stalemate. So that was funny. So the guy who was always losing, he drew the game because of stalemate. He drew anyway. Okay, very suspicious. Not the best players in the world. Close. N not close. Okay, so remember, stalemate is good if somebody's beating you. If you're beating somebody, don't stalemate them because then you don't win, right? Now, when I was, I don't know, in my 20s, I was at a chess tournament and two kids were playing and one kid had a queen like this and the other guy had just a king. And the kid with the queen made a move and said, stalemate! What? Usually when you have a queen and you stalemate, you're like, aw. But he was like really proud of himself. So I walked up to the game and I said... Do you know, like, what the result of the game is? And they went, no. He just threw it with stalemate. He was like, yes, stalemate. I know what that is. And I said, stalemate means the game is a tie. Nobody wins. And they went, okay, great. 
That makes no sense. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a kid. So the kid knew what stalemate was. He just didn't know what it meant. He's like, it's stalemate. It is stalemate. And I was like, it's better not to steal me. It's better to checkmate. And he's like, what? Yeah. Stealing was something he heard of, so he did it. Right? Yeah. For example, you're on a game show and you win. Hooray for you. And they say you can have any car you want in the world. Probably the best idea is to get the most expensive car in the world and then maybe sell it. And then you have a lot of money. Right? Or you could say, hmm, a Ford Focus. I've heard of that car. I want that one because I've heard of it. Is that, that a good idea? Sense. No, that car that car is worthless. Might as well not have it, right? That car costs nothing. Some cars cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. That car costs like eleven thousand dollars. So you could have got a three hundred thousand dollar car and you got eleven because you heard of it. Right? You see what I'm saying? Who's the best chess player in the world? A lot of kids go, my dad is. My dad always beats me. So in their world, that's the best player in the world. They haven't played the world champions. They don't know there's tournaments. That's the world they live in. My dad's the best, right? I hear that a lot, by the way. Nobody could be my dad. And I'm like, what? Okay, so the point is, just because you know the word stalemate doesn't mean you should do it. It's something you should do if you're losing, if you're winning. Now, other games end in stalemate because of tricks. I'll show you a funny trick because tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids. Okay. So normally this position would be winning for white, but it's not winning for white because of stalemate. Okay. White has a queen, black has a rook. A queen is better than a rook. Yeah. The kids are like, I don't know. Okay, so I check you forever. Obviously, if you move your king. Well, if you move your king back and forth, white's not going to win doing that, right? White has to try to win. If white takes the rook, white's not going to win. If white blocks with the queen, white's going to lose. Okay. So white has two ways to try to win. Walk his king... Whoa. That was the wrong button. Walk his king up the board or go to the F file, which I didn't do yet. If I go to the F file... Is white going to win? Lose. No, you draw, you go here. Draw. Okay, so the only way for white to try to win is to play dire straits chess. He's going to do the walk of life. Dire straits, don't sue me. And now, white's the happiest person on earth because he just went to Disney World. Now it looks like white wins. For example, if you check, white plays checkmate. You, you agree? Yeah, you should agree. Yes. Okay. But black has a draw because I said so and because that's the name of the lecture. It's a stalemate lecture. Now, here's something I didn't tell you because I don't want you to draw me. I want you to lose to me. I'm the teacher. Oh, wait. As the teacher, I want the student to beat me. Anyway, dang, some of my students have beaten me. Sweetie shitty. Okay. So, yeah. Good, great for me. Anyway, so I go to therapy. All right. Anyway, so when somebody's beating you, what a lot of people do is they give away their last piece. Because if you have a rook and your rook has 20 legal moves, you're not going to get stalemated. Oh, I'm in stalemate. And I'm like, you're in stalemate. Your rook can go here, 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 here. You're not in stalemate, right? If you didn't have a rook, see how I did that? See how tricky I am? Now black has nowhere to go. How does black give away his rook without playing this move, which leads to checkmate? What's the other move? You, with the right answer. Um, down. down where? So many places to move down. Next to the king. So like right here? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, that's also called a skewer, but that's not part of this lecture, right? No. Okay. Now, white, surprisingly, has three legal moves. No. One, whoa, one, two, three. If you move your king to one of the first two squares, black takes your queen. So you take the rook, and now it's black's turn to move. Black has nowhere to move. Stalemate. Okay. 
if black doesn't play rook h6, then black's going to lose. So he has to play rook h6. Okay, and that's stalemate. So actually in the beginning position, this one, this is where we started. After rook g7 check, if both sides play good moves, it's a draw. White can't avoid stalemate, white can't save his queen. And that's because white's queen is very close to his king. Now what's funny about this is, the reason people aren't good at chess, there's one reason. The reason is, a teacher tells you something, and you either don't listen or you forget. We'll, we'll pretend that you're nice people, and we'll say that you forgot. Some of my students don't listen, they argue with me. And then they lose all their games. Good job, student. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now, good players, if they were in my lecture, grandmasters and such, they would say, this is too easy. I know all of this. Then they would go play a game and they would stalemate somebody because they forgot. Okay? And that's because they're not thinking about stalemate. They're thinking how great they are that they're up 10 pieces. Don't do that. Now, there's a book you never heard of called Think Like a Grandmaster. And it's written in Russian and it was translated into English. And the translator wrote, one of the things the guy wrote in the book was, Dizziness due to success. Okay? Like, I'm so good that you stop playing good because you think you're so good. Okay? You, you're dizzy. That makes sense. You're like, I'm the greatest. Nobody can beat me. And then you make a mistake. Careful. That's probably not a good idea. You probably shouldn't be thinking how great you are when you're playing. Now, here's what happens. You go to a tournament and you're paired against somebody. You're like, oh, man, I always beat them. They're my favorite opponent. I'm going to win for sure. Then you take all their pieces, and now you're like, yeah, I knew that. I knew I was going to take all their pieces. And now you stop paying attention because they're so easy. And now it's a stalemate because you weren't paying attention. Then you didn't win. Okay? That's what happens in chess. So in chess, if you lose focus, you don't win. Now let's look at some examples of losing focus. Then we're going to look at two of my games where I didn't lose focus. It's okay. Funny Those are my games. Who, what? It's yeah. Funny well, they're positions I'm showing you now. This is a very famous one. Beliovsky Christensen. Beliovsky was one of the top five players in the world. And Christensen is one of the top five players in the United States. Okay. All right. Now, in this position, we're going to start from white has an extra bishop. Everything is the same. And white has a bishop. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So therefore, don't hit the wall. Don't, don't get your chair away from the wall. Yeah. yeah, everything away from the wall. You're hitting your head against the wall. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah, no wall. Okay, and then all in all, you're just another head hitting the wall. Okay, you too, Snitchy. Yeah, you're looking the wrong way. Okay, now, so therefore, when good players are ahead, uh, don't do that. When good players are ahead of Bishop, they always win, except when they don't. So black played check. And probably white should just take that, but white moved his king. And black played a move that totally shocked white. Pay attention. Don't do that. You have to leave the room if you do that. Move, move, your, arms, move your arms away. Okay, now look up here. All right. Here, black made the most shocking move I've ever seen. No crying. Black played rook a3, giving his queen away. Okay, let's, let's examine why. If you take the queen, there's a queen, right? Now black checks forever. This is right. Is that stalemate? The answer is no. It's, it's a perpetual check. It's check forever. Okay. Now white doesn't want to draw because white's up a bishop. Okay. So the reason black can't do that now is black's que white's queen is defending h3. If white plays queen takes queen, now, now you're not defending h3. Once again, white can win with queen takes rook, but white played knight check, knight e8 check. And black just moved his king. And he said, hey, do you want to take my queen again? And then I'll do all that checking stuff. And white's like, I don't want to do that. And white took the knight. And now, remember all that checking stuff I showed you? You can't do that because the queen would take your rook. 
I can show you. Rook takes, rook check, I take your rook. That doesn't work, does it? Okay, so now white is ahead two pieces. That's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, and black played, rook takes, and queen takes bishop. This is the move that white missed. Queen takes bishop. Confusing the audience. Okay, and again, this is the same checking thing I showed you. If you take the queen, I check you forever. It's the forever checks. So that would be a draw. Okay, so white doesn't want to draw. So white played rook to d7. This is the trickiest move in chess history. Confusing the audience. The audience is like, I don't understand. Why did white give his queen away? Do you know why white gave his queen away? I know. Why? Because his rook up to age seven is checkmate. Checkmate. So did black take that queen and get checkmated? No. No. Okay. This is a stalemate lecture. Black played. Queen takes knight. Remember, black was down two pieces. Now black's down no pieces. Now, remember all that checks I showed you? After queen takes queen, he can't do all those checks. Because after the rook goes here check, the queen takes it. So, black, so white thought he was winning, because we can't do all those checks. Now, let's look at black's pieces. Can that move? No. Can that move? No. Can that move? No. Can that move? Can that move? Yes. No. No, it can't move. It's pinned. Right? So if none of those can move, the only things that can move are these rooks. That means if you don't have those rooks, it's stalemate. Right? So he gave his rooks away. Okay? And now when he takes, he goes here. And he checks forever. Yay! Why is he taking it? If he takes it, stalemate. Right. So after rook h2 check, they agree to a draw. They're like, all right, it's going to be stalemate. Darn. And then white cried like a grandmaster. And I have a book out there, Cry Like a Grandmaster. Also, I'm not kidding. He actually does. Yeah, you've seen that book, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a book in that room, Cry Like a Grandmaster. Yeah. You can't make those jokes up. It's true. I mean, you can, but I'm not making it up. Yeah. I didn't write the book, but the book is about me. I was crying before you were born. And Vin also played Hade. Okay. Magnus. Now, this is, the, this is the one that I know. Okay. This was played in the U.S. Championship a long time ago. In this position, white's getting crushed. Black has an extra knight and black is checkmating white. And that's what black did. He played check, and now he blundered. He took this pawn. Not only is black ahead of knight, black's threatening like six different checkmates. I just said six, but there could be five. One, two, three, four, five. There's only five? I see orange. Darn, I only see five checkmates. Okay, maybe there's six. Anyway, if Black was listening to the lecture here, Black wouldn't have played Queen takes G3. But he wasn't at this lecture because this game was played in 1963. So he had a good excuse, right? Okay. But if he was at the lecture, he'd move his Queen like to G6 and win. But okay. Anyway, so he took. Now, see all these things that I'm highlighting in green? Can those things move? No. Now, what can move? These two things. We better get rid of them, right? Queen g8 check. Rook takes g7 check. Oh, good. <laughs> and now, if you take my rook or don't take my rook, it's going to be stalemate. And you could move your king away, but eventually you're going to take my rook. There's nowhere to hide, right? See what I'm saying? And it's eventually... And whenever you take the rook... Oops. Whenever you take the rook, it's stalemate. Okay. So, when black played queen takes g3, he didn't realize he was putting white in stalemate here. 
because white had these two pieces. So white gave them away. And the game ended in a draw. So black should have won the game, but he got tricked on stalemate, so it was a draw. That's actually a famous trick. Now, these players were the best players in the world about 110 years ago. They were top 10 in the world. And they knew about stalemate back then. Okay, here's the position we're going to start at. Okay, white has an extra, you know, white's got these passed pawns. Rawr. Unfortunately, if white trades queens, nobody can stop him. So black's going to win. So did white do that and white lost the game? No, he took the pawn. Yay. Now it looks like for sure white's going to win. Because white has these two passed pawns and black has nothing. But black has one thing, stalemate tricks. Okay, now, let's see if you guys are paying attention. You see all these things that are black? These are all of black's pieces, right? Which one's in the wrong place for stalemate? The answer is funny. Which one, that's, that's not good for stalemate, not good. The pawn on H7? That's right. There's no stalemate because that pawn can move, right? If that pawn wasn't there, now we're ready for stalemate. But the pawn's there, so there's no stalemate. <clears throat> so black, after checking, played H5. Now we're ready for stalemate. The pawn on H5 can't move. He made sure his pawn couldn't move. Now he's getting ready for stalemate. And white didn't notice that. Even though, if you go into the tournament room, there's a picture of that guy, Mikhail Chigorin. He was the best player from Russia. Okay, and he, what school did he go to? If only Archer was here. No, old school. And they're like, what? Okay, the game continued. Queen d4, queen e7 check, queen c7 check, and now white blundered. White played the move, and he was like, oh boy, I'm going to win now. I'm the best. He was like, I'm the greatest. And he blundered. He'd win if he plays king back to b4. But he played queen b6 check. He thought they would trade queens, and then he would win easily. And black played the move that he missed. It's not I easy, know, I know. but it's a stalemate lecture, so you a can get it. A -A -A -A. You okay over there? Yeah. King A8 is correct. But white didn't see that move. Did you take it? If you take it, it'll be stalemate, it'll be stalemate right? Yeah. Let's say you don't take it. What else can white do? Nothing. I think there's one other legal move, I think. King A6. King A6. And then I check. And we do it again. And then keep on doing Also, if you don't want to do it again, you could check here, and then you could keep doing that. If you don't want to do the stalemate again. Okay. So after, this is really funny, Archer. This is two super grandmasters in 1905. Black played check, and white blundered with check, and black played king a8. Bam! And then the truth hurts. Now, what you don't know... So you're going to learn something. The second world chess champion was Emmanuel Lasker. The first one was Steinitz. Lasker played a match with Schlechter, the guy who was black. And Schlechter, the, game was, the match was a tie. Lasker won the last game of the match. If Lasker didn't win, Schlechter would have won the match. Now there's an argument about whether Schlechter won by two points, but that's not part of this lecture. So the guy with black, some people think he was the best player in the world. And even though he was losing, he tricked the guy into stalemate. Okay? The guy didn't see stalemate. Tricks are for kids. In King A8, that's a cool move. Okay. So that game was a draw. All the games are draws. Okay. Now these guys aren't very famous, but the end of the game is funny. Now let's see if you guys are the smartest kids in the world. No. Man, that girl tells the truth. <laughs> Who's winning? Black. Black. Let's see what happens. Shall we? Do, 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 do. Now, here's why you guys don't, don't, you know, a lot of people are like, ooh, a free pawn. Okay, now, 
It's black's gonna queen and white's gonna lose for sure. We need to help. We need to keep that pawn for black. We need to stalemate. Okay. And after king d1, black made a horrible, 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 horrible blunder. It's very easy to win if you go check and then check. That was easy. Then black wins. Even you guys would win. She, she's like, no, I wouldn't win. Yeah, you'd win. You'd get like three queens. Yeah. Okay. So instead, black made the worst move ever. Archer's like the worst move ever. Call on me. You. Yeah. Okay. After queen c3, this, this looks good for black. However, black didn't realize that in 1918, what year is this? Don't know. 2018. I was close. I was only 100 years off. I knew it sounded wrong. In 2018, Black didn't realize I would be lecturing on this game. You know why he didn't realize that? Because it was 1880. That's good reason, right? And if he knew about my stalemate lecture, he wouldn't have played Queen C3. Now, what move did White play and Black cried like a grandmaster? <laughs> You! Queen A4? What? Tis not. Now, watch what I do because I'm a grandmaster. Watch me. You watching? Oh, gee. If the queen is off the board, I just put it off the board. That's stalemate. Right? You see how it's stalemate? So make sure the guy gets rid of your queen. Make sure he gets rid of your queen. Make sure he does it. Make it where he has to do it. You with your hand up for some reason. I don't have a... No, behind you. Oh. Was your hand up? Yeah. That doesn't sound like you. What's your move? Mm. Exactly. Mm. That's right. You feeling okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your sister? Yeah. Yeah, she gets the joke. Okay. Queen G8 check. Bam. No, no, he was right to hit you. Okay, queen g8 check, and then black's like, no! And even though Futurama wouldn't be on the air for over 120 years, he still cursed Zoidberg with his dying breath. Yep. It was the first time it happened. But Futurama, don't sue me. Now, I'm gonna tell you something you don't know. Some of you have heard of the show Futurama. No. So, I said some of you. Some of you have heard of the show The Simpsons. Right, but very few of you know the same guy made both of them. Yeah. So when he goes home at night, he's like, "Well, I have a lot of money." What's his net worth? Yeah, four hundred and fifty million. That's a lot. Yeah, he made The Simpsons and Futurama. Now he has hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, and you're like, "What's Futurama? What's The Simpsons? What's four hundred and fifty million dollars?" Right? Yeah. yeah. She's like, "I don't know what that is." <laughs> now Black has to take the queen, and it's stalemate. Right? So black was winning, 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 winning. Oops, didn't see stalemate. I don't win. Okay? And that's because it doesn't happen very often. And the guy's like, no, why did I stalemate? I'm so stupid. Okay, that's what happened. Now, I'll tell you something very funny in that game. An excuse that some people give when this happens, they're like, well, we were playing with the clock, and I didn't have much time on my clock. My flag was going to fall. I had to play fast. That wasn't a good excuse in 1880, was it? They didn't use chess clocks, so no excuse. Okay, this is Schlechter again. again. Okay, now in this position, Schlechter's winning because I said so. Wow, is he winning? Three extra pawns, right? So he was like, I'm winning, I'm Schlechter. Okay. Now his opponent had to finish the game quickly because he had to go to Wall Street. Oh. That's not a joke for you, that's a joke for them at home. There's a movie you never heard of, The Wolf of Wall Street. Okay, anyway, so the game continued. Okay, now, remember the stalemate lecture? Because you're in the stalemate lecture now, right? Yeah. Who wants to get stalemated, white or black? Who wants to get stalemated? Black. black. Now, black's never getting stalemated because this pawn has a lot of moves. And white's like, hey, I'll help you get stalemated. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. White wasn't thinking of stalemate 
Because the Black King has so many moves. He was like, there's no stalemates there. Ridiculous. Okay. And now he blundered by playing Rook... Oh, no, that's not the blunder. Played Rook B1. And now Black did something incredibly ingenious. I mean, just genius. If you want to get stalemate with Black here, you could think your whole life you'd never figure it out. He figured it out in the game. I would never figure this out, except I've seen the game, so now I would. But We stand on the shoulders of giants. That's how I put the light bulbs in. <laughs> exactly. I actually put all the light bulbs in. I stood on a ladder for each one, and I almost fell twice. <laughs> then, then the chess club would be owned by Karen, not Karen and Ben. And there'd be like a big hole in the ground. Well, what's that? <clears throat> that was the previous co-owner. He's dead now. This is an amazing stalemate. I can't. I don't even know how he figured it out. Maybe that's why he's a famous player, and we're just sitting in a room. You figured it out? I think so. What I is it? it? I think it's three. And then what? And then when he, like, he tries to push. The What's the stalemate? Then what? Rookie yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, he's right. How are you right? So actually, White can prevent that, but White didn't see it when it was happening. Right. White was like, "I'm winning. I'm the best." And black played king f3 archer style. And white's like, whatever. That was the first time whatever was ever said, 1906. Whatever. Then black played rook e3. And white, now, now pay attention. This is the psychology of chess you don't understand. But I'm going to explain it to you. When your opponent's doing things and you're like, why is he doing that? You should figure out why. And white's like, well, those moves are stupid. I'll just keep making a queen. White should have said, hmm, why is Black doing this? Then he would have figured it out. Okay, but instead White's like, boy, Black's terrible, I'm going to make a queen. Okay, so White should play Rook F1 check, and then he wins. Okay, I'm going to see what the engine says. It says, Rook F1 check, H4, King F1, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7, plus a billion. White wins. Okay, instead, White was like, yay, I'm making a queen. I'm the best. And he missed, he missed the, the next move from Black, and the game's over. How does Black get rid of his rook and get stalemated, other than Archer? How can Black get rid of his rook? He can make a move, and White has to take his rook. Oh, bathroom's down the hall. You... Rookie one. Rookie one check. White didn't see that. Notice how it's checked because I said so. But white has to take stalemate. So what's funny about that is the guy who fell into the stalemate who didn't see it, he was the guy who did the stalemate previously. It's the same guy. He didn't learn from his own game. Boo! Okay. His play was not as good. Okay. Now, some of you have heard of Gary Kasparov. Don't do that. Like Archer. Have they heard of Gary Kasparov? Uh, maybe Connor. You're, Connor's like, I'm not saying nothing. Man, he look, he's look, like, I'm innocent. If Connor heard of Kasparov, he would be like jumping up. I've heard of Kasparov, but he didn't do that. So, Kasparov was world champion for about 10 years. Some say more. There's an argument about that. And a lot of people think Kasparov was the greatest player who ever lived. A lot of people think that. I don't, but a lot of people do. Pay attention. Okay. Now, he was doing something you've never heard of called a simul. That's where one guy plays a lot of guys because the one guy's better than them. Could be a girl, too. Okay. And Kasparov was playing a lot of people, and of course he was winning. Okay, they got this position. Kasparov's white. Kasparov played, bishop takes d5 check, and black moved his king. And then he played check, and black moved his king. And then he played check, and black moved his king. And then he played check, and black made the only legal move. And then he played check, and black moved his king. And then he checked, and black moved his king. And he checked, and black moved his king. And he checked, and black moved his king. And he checked. And black moved his king. And then he took this pawn. He finally didn't check. And Kasparov said, hmm, I have two bishops and a pawn for a rook, and I'm threatening the rook, and I'm going to checkmate him everywhere. 
I am winning. I am the best. I am Kasparov. Okay, and then the, the guy with black found the most beautiful stalemate ever. Now, what's funny about this, this was in 1986. In 1988, there was a blitz tournament in Canada. It was called the World Blitz Championship. All the best players in the world played. It was a knockout. And the winner of the tournament got $50,000 for a blitz tournament. That's like our blitz tournaments here. No, it's not. It, it's like it. Anyway, $50,000 in 1988. That's like one billion dollars today. That's a lot. Okay, anyway, in that blitz tournament, there was a game, Kasparov versus a Bulgarian grandmaster you've never heard of. Kasparov had a queen and a bishop. His opponent had nothing, and Kasparov stalemated him. Okay, and he's like, ah, because it was a blitz game. He had seconds on his clock. Ah, okay. <laughs> What's funny is two years before that game was this game. And his opponent saying, hmm, can't get stalemated when I have all these pieces now, can I? So he took this. And Kasparov was like, whatever. That was the second time that was used. <laughs> and now Black played an amazing move to get stalemated. Let's see if you guys can find it. Now remember, you're not going to get stalemated if you have a queen, because your queen has like 20 legal moves. So you better get rid of that. You. Um, queen e4. Taking the bishop? You're very close. If I take your queen, it's not stalemate, though. You, you've never been so close. It's the closest you've ever been. <laughs> Archer. Queen e5. Check. Yeah, queen e4, queen e5, very similar. Queen e5 check. Notice, not only is it check, it attacks the queen. So if white moves his king, then black's going to win. So white has to take, right? Stalemate. Man, Kasparov likes to stalemate when he's up a queen and a bishop. Maybe he doesn't like it. Now, here's the problem with being famous. Let's say you go outside and start screaming. Huh? Then your mom goes, God, what a dumb kid I have. Okay, and then you go home and you're a dumb kid. Then that's it, right? You see what I'm saying? Now, let's say you're really famous. Right? You're a famous singer. You're a famous actor. Okay? And you go outside screaming. Now you're on TV. What's wrong with that guy? Right? You're, it's on Twitter. It's on Facebook. Look at, that, look at that idiot screaming. What's wrong with him? Right? So when, so when you're famous, you're like, ooh, I want to be famous. But if you're famous, then everything you do, they're like, why do you do that? Now when you do stuff, nobody cares, right? So if you like bang your head against the wall in my class, your parents are like, man, my kid's dumb. But if you were world famous and you did that, they'd be like, what's wrong with that guy? We got to drug test him and put him in the clinic and he can't make movies. Okay, so you don't want to be famous, right? Now Kasparov is famous, even though you haven't heard of him. Kasparov is a famous grandmaster. So when he stalemates somebody up a queen and a bishop, we're like, oh, how could he do that? What's wrong with him? Then everybody analyzes it and laughs at him. If you guys stalemate a queen and a bishop, up, nobody knows. You guys can blunder every move and nobody cares. When a grandmaster blunders, then we make fun of him for years, sometimes hundreds of years. Look at the game from 1880. Why'd that guy do that? Right? So being famous is tough. Everything you do, they analyze it and make fun of you. You. What? Happens to me too. I lost a game in 10 moves once. So people are like, you lost in 10 moves. Now if they lost in 10 moves, nobody knows because they're not famous. Okay, now I'll show you two of my games, if I have them, where my opponents tried to get stalemated and I said, Ish don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Once was against Herman. This was in like 2009, 2008. In Texas. Okay, no games found. Oh, I think it's Herman with one end, but I think it's two ends. I think I'm crazy like Fox News. <laughs> Let's get rid of that end. There we go. Okay, 2011 in Texas. Okay. Now, I'm black. Okay. And in this position, I'm like, oh boy, I'm the best. Here comes my pawn queening. And my opponent played here, 
And I was like, well, wait a minute. Why is he letting me queen and he's not giving up? Like, why would he do that? Like, I'm going to win. What's he doing? Then I realized what he was doing. Stalemate. If I queen, and queening does win, but I don't want to, I want to avoid stalemate. Then he tries to give his rook away. You see what I'm saying? If I take it, it's stalemate. You see what I'm saying? All right. And I was like, oh, now I can still queen and then I can block his rook with my queen and stalemate him. But I was like, look, dude, I know that you know that I know that you know. So I made a rook. Now there is no stalemate because the king can go here. So he'll never be stalemated ever. And he was like, all right. So he gave up because he realized I knew that he knew that I knew stalemate, right? Okay, now the next game, the guy did it twice. He tried for two stalemates. And I was like, dude, you can't try for two stalemates. It's only one game. Okay, and not only is this guy is a master, his sister's a master also. What? Yeah, good family. Okay, so um, this is Tommy Ulrich in Chicago 2013. Obviously, White's winning. Okay, White has a lot more ones. Okay. Chicago. Now, in this position, watch what happened. He played check. Because he did. And then I played the obvious move. Right. Now, this is the same stalemate that I already showed you. Yeah. King H8. So did I take his queen and stalemate him? Yes. No. Okay, so I pushed my pawn, and then the game went on. Then he did it again. Okay. And in this position, he played queen E8 check, letting me promote with double check. So I could make a queen... And his king is in check by two pieces. You see what I'm saying? He has one legal move. King d6. King d6. And now, if I take his queen, it's stalemate. But I lecture on stalemate. I don't stalemate people. I lecture on how not to do it. They don't make noise. So... So he knew that I knew that he knew I did it again. I promoted to a rook. Now what's funny about this is it's still stalemate. But there's less stalemates. So if I take his queen, it's still stalemate. Isn't that funny? No. Still stalemate. Okay. I even I talked to Dre and Lionel Richie and they both said still. Yep. Yeah. They said it a different way. Right? You can ask Snoop Dogg, he'll tell you. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, exactly. Uh, I can't say what I want to say. Moving on. After King D6, did I take his queen and stalemate him? No. No, I checked him. He was like, man, this guy keeps not stalemating me. So he resigned. If he moves his king, I probably have some checkmates, but I could just take his queen. And there's no stalemate. Aw. So... The, the rule for the day is, so you learn something, there's two kinds of chess positions. You're going to win or your opponent's going to win. Okay? In either position, you should be thinking stalemate. You know what you shouldn't be thinking? Arby's. Don't think Arby's. Okay? Now, if you're winning and you're like, I'm going to win, I'm up five pieces, you better not stalemate your opponent. You should be thinking about that. Don't stalemate. Don't stalemate. If you're losing and you're down five pieces, you should be thinking, how do I get stalemated? That would be good, right? Okay, so remember that when you're playing, always think about stalemate so you don't stalemate anybody by accident and so they stalemate you. Then you'll get a lot of extra half points. Now we'll do a math quiz. We're going to vote. Ready to vote? No. Okay, you have to vote. It's a math quiz. You can vote for person A. You can vote for person B. Or you can vote for neither. Those are the three things you can vote for. And I'll, I'll, call, I'll do a roll call, and you'll raise your hand when I get to the one you want to vote for. Ready? Okay. You're playing in a tournament, you, and you, you're person A. And you win your first game, and you lose your second game. Okay? Okay. You're person B. After two games, you have two stalemates. Okay? Okay. 
So your person A, you won and you lost. Your person B, you have two stalemates. Which one of them has more points in the tournament? Who says person A? Raise your hand. Who says person B? <laughs> Were you not listening? What? That means he wasn't listening. He said what? And who says they have the same? Yeah, they have the same. Yeah. He, he won and he lost, so he has one. And he has two stalemates, so he has one. What? Oh. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if they get paired in the third round, because they both have one, do they already play each other? No. no. How could they have played each other if he has two stalemates and he has none? Obviously, they didn't play each other yet, right? So a stalemate is better than a loss, but it's worse than a win. So if you're losing, try to get stalemated. If you're winning, don't stalemate. That kid was pretty happy when he did the stalemate. I'm like, what? You don't want a stalemate, you want a checkmate. He's like, what? I heard a stalemate. Yes. What is stalemate? You, it's your move, you're not in check, you, and you have no legal moves. That's, that's stalemate. Okay? And if your opponent's in stalemate, the game is a draw, so be careful. Now, before we finish the lecture, I'll tell you something funny, then we'll leave. Ready? There's an organization you never heard of called FIDE, F-I-D-E. That's the organization that rules chess in the world. The equivalent, which maybe you heard of, is FIFA. They rule soccer. You ever heard of soccer? Yeah. The world soccer organization is FIFA. The world chess organization is FIDE, spelled totally differently. Now, there's a guy, he wants to be the head of FIDE. He wants to be the president, okay? He's running for president right now. He's a grandmaster. He's a grandmaster you never heard of. Okay? And in his opinion, which nobody agrees with, he thinks if you stalemate somebody, you should win. He wants the rules changed. He says, I stalemated you, I win. And he's not kidding. What? People are worried if he becomes the president, he'll have the rules changed, but he won't. He can't. Okay? And. Just to make, make it, it sounds like he's an idiot, but actually, well, I mean, he might be an idiot, but that's not related to the draw rule. Now, pay attention. In checkers, a game you've never heard of. No. Okay. In checkers, if you stalemate your opponent, you do win. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not as crazy as you thought he was, although he is crazy, but not for that reason. Okay. So stalemate is a draw. But if Nigel Short was in charge, it would be a win. Oh, Nigel. Now that would be very strange because you could have just a king and you could still make your opponent and you'd win what? with just a king. I need him to clarify. I need him to clarify his rules. His rules don't make any sense, right? Yeah. See, my rules make dollars. His rules don't make any sense. That's the joke they laugh at. Class dismissed.